Hi, my name is John and this is Business Focus. In today's video, I will talk about or share with you four steps on how to conduct hypothesis testing. So let's get started. Hypothesis testing is a crucial aspect in trying to conduct research whether in, uh, in the academe or even in business. So the four steps are as follows. So step one here is you need to formulate the null and alternative hypothesis. This is crucial in order to do it right, otherwise it would affect your uh, conclusion later on. So you need to identify the relevant population parameter here, namely to be testing the population mean, population variance, or even population variance here. Uh, once you've identified the parameter, you need to now determine what type of tail test or how many tails are you testing here. Is it a one tail or two tail test? Or is it left lower tail test? Or is it right upper tail test? And in order to do that, uh, you need to identify the inequalities uh, used here. So it's important. And in order to do that, uh, you need to know the what type of test is it? Is it based on research, claim, and decision making? If it's a test of research or a study, uh, you state the alternative hypothesis first and then if it's a test of claim or belief you state your hypothesis in the null hypothesis first and if it's a decision making meaning two outcomes uh, automatically it's a two-tailed test here and that's important uh, next step two here is determining or identifying the level significance uh, the level significance can be determined based on the confidence level now, the range of the confidence level will range from 0 to 100%. But in research, typically, there are three common values that are being used or often used. You have 90%, 95%, and 99%. And all of those three correspond to the corresponding uh, level significance. If it's 90%, uh, the level significance is 0.1. If it's 95%, it's 0 0.05. If it's 99%, it's 0 0.01. Now, in case in a situation the level significance or sorry the, uh, the confidence level is not provided, rule of thumb we often use the 95% which is 0 0.05 here. Third step now is determining the test statistics to apply so that we can determine the p-value here. Now there are four types of test statistics that you can use. You have the z-test, t-test, f-test, and chi-square test. So in order to identify which one is applicable will depend on several factors. So first is if your population is based on one to two population, you can use Z and T test here. How do you even distinguish further which is applicable will depend on two things, the sample size and the standard deviation. So if your sample size is greater than 30 and the standard deviation is known, you use Z test here. If any of those two are not met, automatically use t-test here. So if your standard deviation is unknown, use t-test. If the sample size is less than 30, use t-test either way. Next, you have chi-square test. Now, when do we use this? Uh, typically, when you're testing for goodness of fit, meaning you're testing if the proportions are the same or not, then the other circumstances is using test of independence, meaning if both factors are independent from one another and vice versa. And the fourth and final test statistics that you can use is the F-test, which is normally used for ANOVA testing, for testing of significant difference, if they're the same or not the same. And finally, for regression, meaning testing for significant relationship here. Once you've done that, you convert those test statistics values using Excel's function formula to be able to compute for the final p-value. Once done that, step four will be determining the conclusion. In order to do that, you just need two things, the p-value and the level significance, which we already did in steps two and steps three. So you just need to compare it. Now, there are two ways of solving for the conclusion here. Now, I prefer using the p-value approach over the critical approach. It's much simpler and it's not too complicated in terms of comp comparing the two uh, variables here. So for the p-value approach, you just simply compare the p-value if it's less than or equal to your level of significance. If the statement is true, you reject the null hypothesis. If it's false, 
you do not reject the null hypothesis. Now you may notice both instances in the conclusion you're testing the validity of the null hypothesis. We never mention the alternative hypothesis because we want to avoid making a type 2 error here which is a colossal mistake if you simply accept the alternative once you've rejected the null hypothesis. To sum up the four steps in hypothesis testing, first is identify the or develop the null and alternative hypothesis. Second is to determine the level significance. Third is to conduct the test statistics in order to determine the p-value. Fourth and final steps is to find the conclusion using the p-value approach here. Once done, you've already con completed your hypothesis testing. And that concludes our video for today. If you find this video helpful, hit the like and subscribe button. Also, you can leave your comments down below to suggest other topics for future videos. For more guides, tutorials, and tips, you can check out my other videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.